for that. I wonder, what names do you, by which do you refer to God? In our unity history, quite often, we've referred to God as Father Mother. I kind of like all that is. I thought it was out of the Native American influence in Washington until I read it in a Charles Fillmore book. <laughs> yeah. And you notice I often begin prayer with beloved presence. Now sometimes my little imp comes out and I like a little bit more humorous addressing to God. I think of it as the grand overall, <laughs> grand overall design or my general operations director because I am most days real clear who is in charge of my life better the G-O-D than me. <laughs> and then often there are those times when I do forget who I put in charge of my life. And even when I'm saying, how did that happen? Or, oh my, wasn't that a surprise? Or that really came out of the blue. I know I'm still addressing God somehow. But this poses several questions. The first of which is, where is the blue? And how do I get stuff out of it? I want to know these things if I'm going to float around in it with you all. It's a common expression, isn't it? I grew up with out of the blue, but I didn't really know its origin, which kind of surprised me when I went and did a little research because it's, it's based in science. And I, I lived with a physicist for 19 years. How did I escape this particular lecture? I am still unclear, but thank you that I did, sort of. I mean, you know, I, everything he had to share with me was usually fascinating. I just missed this one, which is odd because my husband was a high voltage specialist. That means he worked in lightning simulation. He worked in nuclear effects. Anybody in this room can say they have a lightning simulator in their garage or workshop or <laughs> bedroom closet? Yep. Yep. He was a delight to live with. But the origin of the phrase out of the blue comes from that experience, blue skies, no storm, no clouds, no nothing, and boom, a strike of lightning comes right in front of you or, you know, somewhere nearby, startling as it would be. I've had this experience. Sitting on the deck of a summer cabin with my family in Washington State a few years ago, we call them decks, not lanai's on the mainland. We were sitting there having a great time, me and five of my cousins and an aunt and my mother and all of us together. Out of the blue, boom, a strike of lightning. I'm, I swear it was hardly at the back of the chapel from where we were seated. Now, it was an interesting moment to see six adults try and merge through one doorway inside. <laughs> because out of the blue moments are often very startling. And what I hope you'll take away from today is that that's a good thing. Because out of the blue in the context we're talking about today really sort of is like lightning effects. But I think that's often how we understand God as though lightning in a blue sky. You know, the storm and the clouds, are, they exist somewhere or lightning wouldn't be generated. But they're just not in my field of reference. Not, they're not in my scope of view. And yet here comes that strike of lightning right in front of me. Gets my attention every time. Much like God. Around me, all the time, around each and every one of us, it's the pervasive energy of the universe in which we move and live and have our being, but sometimes it seems that we're not aware of where it's located, which is right here, folks. And when we're sort of pretending like we're not aware, we're a little unconscious, forgetful, I call it temporary spiritual amnesia moments from time to time, maybe we're overwhelmed by difficult situations in our life, we're just not focused in the moment on the energy of God. And then here God shows up, boom, the lightning strike right in front of us to remind us that we are indeed held in this net 
this field of potential that is the energy of God. Now, I think of it sometimes as God is sneaking up on me when I'm not looking. So how can we notice when God is there, but we've kind of become unaware in the moment and pay attention to those lightning strikes? We're going to talk about synchronicity today, which is the the experience of two or more events that are apparently unrelated, yet are experienced together in a meaningful manner. Now, the meaningfulness comes from us, comes from our unique experience and our unique life. Two unrelated events might really be unrelated if it was in your life rather than mine, but I might be caught by the attention, by the noticing of a relatedness, a meaning in my life, and it's like a little signal. Pay attention. Like God is nudging me with his elbow, whispering in my ear, saying, here's something to pay attention to. Notice this, because this will be helpful. Pay attention now. Listen close. That's what coincidences are, another word for synchronicity. We might refer to it as chance or luck. But I think luck is really a modern day term for what we've called over the ages the occurrence of miracles. We just haven't understood the process. How do we stay attached to the energy that makes miracles occur as opposed to just thinking it was dumb luck? That process is hinged on synchronicity, the coincidences moving in our lives, asking for our attention. Easy steps to follow, folks. Louis Pasteur said, chance favors the prepared mind. So one of the first things, and you'll be familiar with this process, one of the first things to make ourselves prepared for the recognition of God's movement in our lives is prayer and meditation. Now that was a surprise, wasn't it, for all of you who are here most weeks? Yeah. Prayer and meditation is how we center ourselves in awareness of God and hold that space more and more and more as we move through our life. Prayer and meditation is how we stay connected rather than becoming disconnected. So when we are prepared for chance, what we have is an opportunity. Now that's the coincidence. The coincidence provides the opportunity. It opens the door to our seeing something that someone else might not see. Coincidences are so a universal human experience that do we just dismiss them regularly? If I had a quarter for every time I failed to pay attention to the little voice in me, I would be a wealthy woman. I have had to learn by the experience of difficulty that when I hear a little nudge of wisdom within me, it would behoove me to pay attention. So my invitation to you all today as you move forward is people pay attention to what God is whispering to you, to the little elbow in your side from God. Because when we combine these opportunities, these coincidences with our preparedness, the equation results in good luck, the chance occurrence, and hopefully a whole lot of miracles coming your way. Synchronicity is the ever-present reality for those with eyes to see. That's necessary. To be in that connected space of knowing that the activity of God is all around you in every moment. To have your God eyes on. So when you see these occurrences, something in you says, ooh, wake up. That might be important. Let me just stick it in the catalog file so if there's another data point coming, then I can add it all together and see what's happening in my life. See the guidance that's showing up for me. Seeing the invitation to the next wise thing to do in my life. So the first step in the process, after prayer and meditation for preparation, is to notice the coincidences. They are around us all the time. And because they are so commonplace, we usually just kind of let them flip by, whisk them away, don't pay any attention, and don't 
then capture the value of that communication coming from spirit that might touch and add into our lives. It's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards, said the White Queen. But backwards memory is how we can learn to be more aware of the coincidences taking place in our life and come to understand their meaningfulness and usefulness in our life. I have a story I'll start at the beginning and tell you the story. And then we'll look backwards over our shoulder and see what we learn from the backwards glance. I worked in a company in Monterey a couple of decades ago and more. And part of my job was sort of local chamber of commerce adjunct facility. I was the president's assistant. And as we were hiring new people um, at manager level above, I kind of showed them around town, helped them find realtors, you know, get them, help them get settled into life in Monterey. A woman came to work in our company and she and I became really good friends. We had lunch together two, three times a week, every week, and did things sometimes on the weekend, except then she started going up to the Bay Area to see a man friend, and I lost my playmate on weekends. But we still had a lot of fun, and about three months after she and I had met, she started talking to me about the friend of her, Bo wanted to set me up on a blind date. No, 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 thank you very much. Um, hmm. Took her two months to convince me to go out on a date with this gentleman that she thought I ought to meet. Well, the first date lasted a weekend, <laughs> and the second date lasted a weekend, and well, you know, and the rest was history, as they say. We immediately had this connection, knew we were soulmates. I was blessed to live with this gentleman for 19 years until being a physicist and tired of playing at the small level, he moved on into the cosmos for the great lightning lab in the universe. Died early, it's my statement, not his. He was perfectly, um, I know he's in the light doing what he's doing in the universe wherever that is. And we just had this wonderful relationship. Now you know how it is when you're looking back at something. You're, you're lucky enough to just remember all the good stuff, right? Yeah, because I did say marriage, so you know it was this and that and up and down and back and forward, but it was wonderful. And I blessed the friend that introduced us all the time. So she was there three months before she mentioned this gentleman. It took her two months to get me to say yes to an introduction. A month later, she was gone from that place on to other things. And we said, after we could look back over our shoulder at the series of events, she and I both said, the only reason she came to work in that company had nothing to do with her great talents as an advertising specialist and a copywriter, nothing to do with her marketing skills. She walked in the door of that place to meet me, to connect me with my husband, Hugh. Had nothing else going on there. Well, she got to draw a paycheck in the meantime, which was pretty good all the way around. But we are so clear that that was the series of events after we had time and distance. So the truth is we often can't find this meaningfulness until we have this backwards memory. But we can use that process to invite ourselves into staying alert right now. When it, something happens, that little spark of God whispering in your ear with some odd little occurrence and say, ooh, pay attention. What might be coming next? Let me see if I step through this doorway of opportunity, what next will show up from the wisdom of God? And the next step then is once you've decided to notice and pay attention, then you must place your attention in the spot of these occurrences. You have to stand there on the threshold of that open door so you can walk into the opportunity. And when we be decide to become aware of the little occurrences in our life and look for their meaningfulness to us, well, then we just begin to notice them everywhere. They're all over the place. Now, this is just an innate ability within we, we humans. Dr. Nikki Golden might call it conscious focus rather than coincidence, but it's this ability to laser in on something that captures our attention. So you've all had this, you bought a new car, and the next week you are sure every fourth car on the road is the one you just bought. 
You probably hardly noticed them beforehand, but now they're just everywhere. I want to tell you how many Mustang convertibles there are on this island. <laughs> yeah, this is a natural facility. We just, we just possess this skill to get focused on something once it's come to our attention. So you can play with this down in the courtyard uh, after church and any Sunday you're here or any crowded space you are. If you're down in the courtyard talking with your friends and you're over here in one corner having a nice conversation with a lovely gentleman who's going away and you won't see him very much anymore <gasps> and you're really engrossed in that and loving that interaction, but all of a sudden you hear your name from clear across the other corner of the room and then ear perks up and tries to connect in and pay attention to what that conversation is about because you heard your name. <laughs> Happens at cocktail parties in a crowded office. I mean, I've had it happen in an airport. I was headed trucking down the um, hallway toward my next flight and I didn't have a lot of time and I heard my name. I'm in Phoenix. I'm a thousand miles from home. And I turn around and the person who spoke my name was my nephew who was the same thousand miles from home and we both were just crossing in the airport hallway. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the meaning of that was, but it was lovely to reconnect. Because in my family, we none of us live in the back pockets of one another. And we have to be conscious to stay in touch. And so it was this awareness of family might need my attention. That's what I took from that little moment. What are the chances of running into a family member in an airport when you don't know either one of you is even traveling? Yeah. Now, here is some advice about attention. From Uncle Albert Einstein, any man who can drive safely while kissing a pretty girl is simply not giving the kiss the attention it deserves. <laughs> I want to tell you how important this is, gentlemen <laughs> and ladies. So whatever is in front of you at the moment, let it have your full attention for that moment so that you can capture its meaningfulness. Put it in the file and wait for the next meaningful moment to come its your way. And then when it does, with all of these little incidences showing up, you want to harness the power of your intention. Our intention is our creative force. It's our focal energy. It's how we get ourselves moving forward, carried upon the energy of God. So that forward movement is easeful, graceful, delightful. Problems get solved pretty easily. Things coming together rapidly and with ease and grace. Steve could tell us stories about his relocation to Austin. It all just, the next thing happened and the next thing happened and the next thing happened and doggone it, there were no things that flies in the ointment to put the kibosh on it and he's actually going to Austin. <sighs> I'm resigned, sort of. When we focus our intention, as Steve surely must have done, we move ourselves forward with a more focused energy, taking advantage of this whispering of God in our ear with these little circumstances. Eric Butterworth is a unity minister and author. When you begin to see things from the high perspective of the ever presence of God's substance, you will be in the creative flow of abundance. Abundance in all areas of your life. When you get connected into this awareness of these events, then everything can move more gracefully. A friend of mine was buying a car. I went shopping with him. The first test drive, he said, I, I, I like this car. Okay, well, but no, it's, it's too easy. I like this car, I wanna buy this car and I've done all this research and this is the first car I'm driving. I said, I think it is supposed to be easy. Why would you waste the time unless you just wanna experience driving lots of cars? Buy this one. That synchronicity when it shows up the first time you step out to find a car, sometimes it works that easily. Uncle Albert again, the intellect has little to do on the road to discovery. There comes a leap in consciousness, call it intuition or what you will, the solution comes to you and you don't know how or why. The quantum leap for a physicist, that you start at A and you wanna to get to point B, 
but it happens like that. It happens as quick as that lightning stroke. That you don't really know how you got there, but all of a sudden you found yourself easily moving to the next step. <laughs> you can open the possibility of this activity of synchronicity in your life with that simple three-step process. Notice. Place your attention on what you notice, and then harness your intention and focus it on those circumstances. So I'm going to invite you today to step into a greater level of pain attention in your life. Because wouldn't it be fun if God snuck up on you while you were watching <laughs> and you knew it was there? You knew that's what was happening to you in the moment. You willing to test that this next week? Play with God a little bit and see what shows up? Then I invite you to make this statement with me, if you will, together. I commit to seeing God in everything. Oh, now, come on. I commit to seeing God in everything. Thank you. And your own life will reap the benefits of moving into a greater level of energy and connectivity with the presence of God as you move forward in awareness, in coincidence, and miracles. I invite you into a moment of silence to hold what you have felt this morning. Take a deep breath in to center yourself in this moment's awareness of the God within and around you. Breathing out to let go of whatever it was before, whatever it has looked like up to this moment, you can choose in this hour to see God in everything. And so we, in that intention, come into the holy and sacred silence with God. 